Well, section 18.2 says entropy changes both chemical and physical, which is kind of a, um, a silly uh, name, but um, here we're going to be talking about how we can calculate changes of enthalpy for um, uh, various processes, I guess chemical and physical changes. Uh, but uh, in order to set the stage for that, we need to talk about the third law of thermodynamics. We already went over the first two. The third one uh, defines a condition where the entropy of a system is actually equal to zero. Um, and so it will be a perfectly ordered crystal at a temperature of absolute zero. Um, so for such a crystal, there would be only one microstate. There's not enough energy for any excited states, and there's not any sort of um, uh, alternate configurations for a perfect crystal. There's only one configuration. There's only the ground energy state for everything. And so there's only one microstate, and the entropy for such a crystal is equal to zero. Now, um, <clears throat> for every substance, uh, we could imagine having a crystal at absolute zero and having it be perfectly ordered and then uh, slowly warm it up. And remember S was originally defined as the integral of Q over T, so we could measure how much heat it takes to warm that crystal up and integrate um, uh, that integral and uh, eventually arrive at what we call the standard molar and entropy, okay, so this is the standard molar entropy, and it's usually given for a value of 298K. Oops. Uh, that's what the standard means, standard temperature, standard pressure is one atmosphere and 298 Kelvin. And so every substance is going to have a standard molar entropy. And um, uh, even if it's just kind of a hypothetical exercise, you can't really get a crystal to absolute zero and you certainly can't warm it up to room temperature measuring the heat all along and perform this integral. It's just not practical. But, um, uh, but that can be kind of a conceptual basis for what the standard molar entropy is. And then there are, there are better, more practical ways to actually measure it and get a value for that standard molar entropy. Uh, but anyway, um, if we look at table 18.1, we have a standard molar entropy for a number of substances. And then in your appendix, um, just like we have um, standard enthalpies of formation in that same table will have standard molar entropies, which is the entropy for one mole of that substance at 298 Kelvin. Um, and I want to point out a couple of things. Um, uh, actually, let me get rid of this slideshow for just a second. Uh, in that table in the appendix, uh, you'll see uh, delta G naught of formation, which we'll get to later. You're maybe wondering what the G is for. Okay. And you'll have a delta H naught of formation. And these are the standard enthalpies of formation. How much heat is in the reaction which forms that compound from its elemental constituents. Um, and we covered all of that in 1210. Hopefully that's not too unfamiliar for you, but maybe you want to go back and brush up on it. And then you have S naught. And I want to point out that there's, there's no delta and there's no F. Because so, the delta H naught of formation is a thermodynamic value that is based on a chemical reaction, a formation reaction. Every compound uh, uh, doesn't, uh, there is no absolute reference for enthalpy. We're always talking about the enthalpies of a process, how much uh, heat is released or, uh, or uh, absorbed th through a process, like say the formation reaction of a compound. Well, entropy is different. We actually do have this absolute standard that we can refer it to. And so we don't need to mess about with, uh, with formation reactions or anything else. Every substance has an absolute entropy. 
And so we have the standard molar entropies um, that are represented in that table. Now I want to go back to our short abbreviated table of standard entropies. And one of the consequences of not having to rely on formation reactions is that um, uh, even our elemental forms of uh, uh, elements, uh, our sort of standard elemental forms, have a standard molar entropy. So we see hydrogen gas here. Well, your enthalpy of formation for H2 gas is going to be zero. But um, your S0 is 130.7. And the same for um, oxygen gas here or mercury liquid, which are the standard elemental forms for those substances. Uh, they have a non-zero entropy, and all standard molar entropies are going to be positive valued because everything has some amount of entropy in it, um, uh, except for the perfectly ordered crystal at absolute zero. All right, now um, we're going to uh, use values from that table in much the same way we use delta H naught of formation. So in other words, for a process, we can define now a, a, a change in the standard entropy for a reaction. And that is going to be a sum over the products of um, the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced chemical equation times the standard molar entropy of that substance minus sum over the reactants of the stoichiometric coefficients of each reactant times their standard molar entropy. Just like that. This looks exactly like our enthalpy of reaction formula from 1210, only now we've got standard molar entropies there instead. And so let's consider uh, uh, something like the combustion of hydrogen gas. So if I have a 2 H2 gas plus O2 gas, that is going to form 2 H2O gas. Um, if I wanted to uh, find the enthalpy of this reaction, delta S naught of reaction. Oh, by the way, uh, that is called a naught symbol, and it makes the very delightful S naught, which I, when I was uh, an immature uh, college student like yourself, just loved calling it the delta S naught of the reaction. Okay, so the delta S naught of the reaction is going to equal, we'll sum over our products, that would be two times the standard molar entropy for water vapor, and then we'll subtract our reactants, so minus two times the standard molar entropy for hydrogen gas, and um, minus one times the standard molar entropy for oxygen gas. That's our formula. I'll throw up the table for a moment. Uh, this table happens to have the values that we need for this. So um, we have two times the standard molar entropy for water vapor. That's 188.8. 188.8. Oh no, I left off the units on this table. Um, uh, those should be, uh, S has units of joules per Kelvin. Anyway, so that's uh, 188.8 joules per Kelvin, minus two times the standard molar entropy for hydrogen gas. Looks like that's 130.7 joules per Kelvin. And then we're going to subtract the standard molar entropy for oxygen gas. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. Sorry, I'm just double checking everything. 205.2 minus 205.2 joules per Kelvin. Okay, let me show you what I drew, what I wrote up there. Okay, so this is our formula. And, um, Let's go ahead and calculate it now. Uh, so we have two 
times 188.8 minus 2 times 130.7 uh, minus 205.2 and I got a negative 89. Negative 89.0 joules per Kelvin. Um, okay, and I'm going to make one quick, I'm sorry, my table not having the units threw me off, and I made a small mistake. These are standard molar entropy, so these should all be joules per mole Kelvin, joules per mole Kelvin, joules per mole Kelvin, and here we finally have joules per mole Kelvin. Um, so negative 89 joules per mole Kelvin is the uh, standard change in entropy for the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water vapor.